We're going to start out with pineapple. Now, the core, most people cut the core out of the pineapple. Did you know that pineapple is a really great anti-inflammatory food? It's got really good anti-inflammatory properties, but guess where all those properties are? In the core. If you cut the core out, you don't get all the benefits of the anti-inflammatory properties of the pineapple. Well, if you use canned food, remember by cooking it, you're losing 90 plus percent of the nutrients. So the enzymes are gone, 90 or more percent of the nutrients are gone, plus you've got all the toxic um, chemicals that are in the can that are in your food now. So, Oh, great question. I wish we had a fresh pineapple here. Okay, you've got the little fern on the top, right? You flip it over and you sniff the bottom and it'll smell sweet. So you want to get the pineapple that's as yellow, find the most yellow pineapple you can in the pile, and then sniff the bottom, and if it smells nice and sweet, it's ripe. And if you can't smell anything, then it's probably not ripe. And pineapples, um, some people think that pineapples are like other fruit, that you can just sit it on the counter and it gets riper. Um, pineapples are as ripe as they'll ever get once they're picked, and after they're picked, they don't ripen anymore. So pick your pineapples carefully, smell them, make sure they smell sweet, and that'll ensure that you have a nice ripe pineapple. And when I prepare my pineapples, all I do, I, I had another one, I should have brought it. All I do is I stick it on its side, I chop off the fern on the top, chop off the bottom, and then I stand it up straight, and I just chop the, uh, I just go down with my knife along the edge of it, and I chop the shell off of it, and then put it in the blender, okay? That's all you have to do, it's pretty easy. Okay. It's a whole small pineapple, so if you have a big pineapple, just use a half. Oh, sorry, question, yes. Thank you. Good tip. Did everybody hear that? Okay, great. Okay, the next thing I'm putting in here is lemon. Now, when you're choosing lemons, number one thing is make sure they're organic. If they're not organic, they're covered with pesticides, herbicides, all those chemicals on the outside. And the reason that's important, if you're peeling the lemon, that's not as important. But the organic lemons are going to have a higher mineral content, which is what we want. And most of the nutrition in the lemon and all of the antioxidant and anti-cancer and skin rejuvenating properties of lemon, where are they? They're right here on the border between the yellow skin and the white, right there. So if you're peeling your lemon or juicing your lemon and throwing away the peel, you're missing out on the majority of the nutrition and antioxidants and healing properties of the lemon. Now remember I said lemons are very cleansing for your liver, very healing to your skin. They've got lots and... and big time antioxidants but it's all in the skin so I'm just gonna throw in the whole lemon wash it really good if it's organic you can throw it in seeds peel and all now if it's not organic do you guys know where the toxins are stored when it's not organic two places on the peel and in the seeds so if you're using non-organic produce make sure you take the peel off and take the seeds out because that's where most of the toxins are stored all right, next thing I'm going to put in there. Can you go wash that off? I, there's dirt on it. Thanks. Okay, we'll skip that for a minute. The next thing we're going to put in here is some fresh basil. Now, this is a great summer smoothie because there's lots of herbs out there, fresh herbs that are available. And this, remember how I told you that fresh herbs are prebiotics? Also, fresh herbs are more nutrient-dense than regular greens. So kale, spinach, those kind of things, those are very, very, like the highest nutrient dense foods you can find. Herbs go way beyond that. They are medicinal. They have medicinal properties to them that just regular plants don't have. And so the more herbs, especially fresh herbs, you can add into your diet, you're adding all those prebiotic um, properties to your food, you're adding amazing flavor, you're adding loads and loads of antioxidants, and um, whatever medicinal property the foods have. So basil is really great as a cleansing herb. It's also antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. It helps with um, fighting off viruses. It helps with um, 
strengthening the cells. And then I'm also going to put some fresh mint. So in the summer, fresh mint and fresh basil are abundant. So we're just going to put a bunch of that in. Mint is really good for stress and tension and respiratory disorders. It's also super high in antioxidants. And it's also a prebiotic. Thank you. It's great for headaches. It's great for nausea. It's great for digestion issues. And we'll put a little tiny bit more in. Now my average green smoothie, I have, um, I have a couple books with a lot of green smoothie recipes in them. So I've probably got 20 different green smoothie recipes and most of them just use regular greens like spinach, lettuce, kale, chard, that kind of stuff. This one I love because it is so power packed with all the awesome stuff in there. It's got all your fresh herbs plus all the greens. So I would have to say out of all my smoothies, this one is the most nutrient dense, nutrition packed medicinal smoothie that I have. Plus it's delicious, okay. Ginger, ginger root is really great for aiding in digestion. If you have problems with any kind of digestive disorders, nausea, vomiting, indigestion, um, headaches, acid reflux, um, GERD, all of those things, ginger really helps with all of those conditions. And let's see what else are we going to put in here. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of olive oil in here. You can put whatever fat in there you want, but greens have lots of fat soluble vitamins in them, vitamins and minerals. If there's not some sort of fat in your smoothie, you're missing out on all those fat soluble vitamins. So just by adding a tiny bit of fat, you can do it with an avocado, with chia seeds, with a little bit of olive oil, you can do whatever kind of fat you want in there. But what it does is it unlocks 10 times more of the fat soluble nutrients in there for your body to use just by adding a little bit of fat. I have, I was just worried there was dirt on it and stuff, so I just, I was worried about getting dirty in there. If I was home, you can just throw it in. It's, um, it's very fibrous, so you can, you can leave the peel on if it's organic if you want, but um, it's just super fibrous and it might make your shake a little lumpy. That's all. Okay, so we've got to blend this baby down a little bit and then I'll put the rest of this stuff in. I'm going to add a little bit of water, just enough water to get it to blend. At my house, we drink reverse osmosis water, but we try to um, put minerals back in it. So either with ionic minerals or lemons or, or vinegar or something like that. Coconut water works great. Okay, I'm going to turn this baby on here. Okay, I just put some liquid stevia in there. That's all that is. Um, I used to make my smoothies with 100% juice or a little bit of honey to sweeten it, but I found that using stevia, it makes it so the glycemic index goes way down. You're not adding extra sugar. It doesn't spike your insulin, and it tastes just as good. Um, I think this is sweet leaf. Just make sure when you're buying stevia, make, you just read the label. A lot of stevia products have additives in them, like dextrose and fillers and that kind of stuff. Read the label and make sure it's just stevia extract. That's all you want in there, nothing else. Unless it's like whatever it extracts it out, like water or alcohol or something like that. So you just don't want any fillers in there. All right, so we blended that up, and I'm going to have to pour a little bit in here because my blender's overflowing. Hang on. Okay, that'll give us enough room. Okay, so then I'm going to put in a little bit of spinach. Spinach is very high in iron and magnesium, antioxidants. 
It's a green food, so you're getting your green leafy vegetables in. I recommend, if you can, getting a half a pound to a pound of green leafy vegetables into your diet every single day. That's really hard to do. That's a lot of chewing if you're not doing smoothies or juices. So I recommend doing smoothies and juices to get that amount of green leafy vegetables into your diet every day.